Montreal. Uh, wow. Bonjour. Uh, but I live in New York City now. And, you know, people, especially when I come back, people always ask me, like, is it different living in New York? And I gotta tell you, a city's a city. A city's a city. Mind you, okay, there are little differences, okay? Like, when I was in Montreal, I'd go to the second cup, and I might say, bonjour. May have a café au lait, for example, right? Whereas in New York, I go to Starbucks, and I'm like, hey, motherfucker, give me motherfucking latte, motherfucker! <laughs> so, little differences, but you adjust. I can't wait to fly Oh, I'm alive yeah. And I'm so lucky, I have such a wonderful life I'm so grateful <coughs> You know, I have so many wonderful celebrity friends I know Oprah Winfrey, she's a good friend and you know, Joy Behar, Madeline Albright, so many people <laughs> that are part of my life, and I'm so lucky. You know, the other day, uh, Leah Rimini, formerly of Queen, uh, King of Queens, <laughs> she's an actress, she said to me, hey girl, what's going on with your son? He's got long hair all the way down to here, looks like Crystal Gale. <laughs> I said, first of all, who the hell is Crystal Gale? I don't know. I don't know, I'm from Canada, I don't know. And second of all, <laughs> I said, let me tell you something right now, girlfriend, okay? I said, my son, yes, he's seven-year-old, but he makes his own decision, okay? Because you know what, ladies and gentlemen, I will tell you right now. Children are just like us, only smaller and younger. <laughs> I moved into this building, and my ceiling started leaking. I was back from a trip, and I called my landlord and left him a note, and I got this letter from him that I'm going to read to you. Um, first of all, no one in my building speaks English. They're all Polish. And they have beautiful script. I'll tell you that. Beautiful script. <laughs> but I left him this note, and like a week later, this is what I got. Dear apartment number... I'm not going to tell you because I don't trust you. <laughs> I was here. No one answered me your door. In case of an emergency, you can call any time. He didn't leave a number. <laughs> I'm here Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Please let me know when someone will be home, then I can do something to you. <laughs> I left him a note and I said, you know what, on second thought, just change the locks. Put your hands together for Leah Doobie. My dad is a gym teacher, but he is an elementary school gym teacher. And if you know anything about gym teachery, <laughs> The elementary school gym teacher is really, uh, that's the one to be. That's it, because the high school and the junior high, people don't give a shit. They don't, they're like, I have shit to do. I, ha I don't have time for, for kickball and rope climb. I am busy. But in elementary school, it is like the best class on earth, is it not? Gives like every kid with ADD a chance to like run that shit off. <laughs> It's very important, it's very important. But there is a point, and I remember this vividly, when it loses its impressiveness. It's around the sixth grade, and I remember back at that time, like kids really only had one way to describe negative emotions, and it was the phrase, that's so gay. <laughs> Your dad's a gym teacher. It's gay. Jim's gay, that's gay, gay, gay. Your dad, Jim, gay. It's not like hemming my prom dress, <laughs> sleeping with men at truck stops, as far as I know. <laughs> I just think that, like, first of all, I, if you know any gay men, none of them would ever try and pull off a jogging suit as a legitimate outfit. <laughs> Never! <laughs> that is my dad's business casual. <laughs> He's got about 500 of those in his closet. But I just think your dad's a gym teacher that's so gay makes about as much sense to me as your dad's a gym teacher that's so black people. <laughs> your dad's a gym teacher, how half Cuban of him. 
<laughs> Why don't you just say it as it is? Your dad's a gym teacher. He'll probably never have a summer home. <laughs> and be paying off those school loans until you're 40. And I have, a, I have a twin brother who's very, very straight. And you can tell the difference between us by our seventh birthday. Because on his, he was wearing a Spider-Man shirt, and on his cake was a baseball player, and I was wearing a three-quarter lens for Hobbit Beach tea. <laughs> and on my cake was a unicorn leaping over a rainbow. <laughs> Not a joke. <laughs> Even though we were so different, people still asked us, like, did you guys switch places in April Fool's Day to trick people? And I was saying, can you imagine the tragedy that would happen? You turn on the local news that night, it would be, today's top stories, a local student chopped on his arm to name shop class, building what looks like Jason Priestley riding a Pegasus. <laughs> in related news, his twin brother started a brawl in show choir. <laughs> yes. And I try to imagine if we switch places today, what would happen? Like if I go to Pennsylvania to his electrician site, and he'd come to a gay bar in New York, what would happen? Like I go to the site, they'd be like, Hollenbach, put the conduit next to the big pipe. I'd be like, the big what? <laughs> Which porta potty? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And then my twin brother would come to the state therapy, a gay bar in New York, and a gay guy would hit on him, and my brother would say, dude, like fucking a dude's like fucking a sheep. <laughs> and when I've been blinking, the gay guy would say, meh. <laughs>